So, looks like we got the move to 8,000, but what's next? Well, 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 welcome back to Crown's Crypto Cave. Wishing you a happy and healthy start to your uh, Friday morning over here from a bright and sunny, hel uh, bright and sunny Helsinki, Finland. Hey, OBS, can you work over there? Yes, indeed, I can. And most, more importantly, a massive emphasis on the healthy port part of that, as uh, you'll probably hear some coughing and sneezing in the background. That's Elsa. She was feeling uh, actually rather well yesterday and uh, now feeling very, very terrible once again today. So uh, unfortunately, probably dealing with a little bit of real life uh, <laughs> during this time. And I'm sure that you can guess what it likely is. And, uh, and that's unfortunate. So uh, that also reminds me that uh, I won't really be able to get to a lot of my messages in my inbox. I would humbly request that unless it's like super important, um, you know, hold off for now. Uh, then that means like, if it's like, hey, can you check my analysis? You know, shit like that. Uh, probably not the best time for that. Um, perhaps in the future again, uh, and uh, and that's all well and good. Um, also, I want to say in a more light tone, uh, I have one of the most amazing pieces of news I think I've received since starting this YouTube channel, and that is the success story of one of the guys in the uh, in the program. Now the program's almost about a little bit under two years old now. And this person I've, I've known from the beginning, seen him work his way up and he finally messaged me today, not finally messaged me today, but he messaged me today saying, hey Crown, um, I just did it. I, I, hit, I hit two commas in my bank account and this is the American two commas, not the European two commas, uh, meaning a million dollars plus and I'm really fucking happy for you, man. I wanna look directly into the camera because I, I, I know that you're probably watching or at least judging off your message, you probably are watching seeing, <laughs> as, as you said that you're held now needs to become a priority because you've been spending all this time in the cave for the past few years. Yes, I totally understand that, man. But before you go, I do want to say massive, 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 massive accomplishment. That's fucking amazing. You did it. You fucking did it. And you know, at the end of the day, is it's just pickles on your bank account. Yes, I understand that. It's, it's it's a milestone nonetheless. And knowing from where you started from and seeing you every day put in the work that's just incredible. That's just incredible. And I couldn't be more happy for you. And I wanted to express that, uh, that excitement. Um, cause I, I love hearing stories like that. Um, for a lot of the other people who are in the program discord, you probably know this person. I think though, he, he wants to remain uh, somewhat anonymous, but you'll probably be able to tell cause well, Hilly's going to be like, probably having like a lot of exclamation points out of after his messages and whatnot, as, uh, as you'd imagine, you know, he's excited and, uh, and as he should be. Um, so other than that, what else do I want to say? Uh, I may or may not be on Twitch today. I'm not so sure just yet. I do need to set up a few more things. I'm working on a few more th uh, things with my overall setup and like I said, uh, dealing with a girlfriend who is uh, not feeling all that well right now and perhaps it's going to be my turn soon enough anyways. Um, other than that, let's go check out the Crown Trading application and which can be found at app.crowntrade.net. It's free. Enjoy it. It's it's all good. And what do you know? We have the devil's, the devil's number right on the open interest. Uh, triple sixes right there. <laughs> In which if you remember from yesterday, we got up to about 720 to, to about 730 million uh, in open interest now coming down all the way to uh, a little bit below 670 million. So a loss of about 50 to 60 million in position sizing as Bitcoin did hit up to our blue box target to the upside and now coming back down, which to me does still make me very apprehensive. And of course, is going to tie into the analysis. I know that this is the point where people say, crowd, fuck you, man. Fuck you, because... Because, 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 <laughs> you know, who knows? Um, but my point is, is that, uh, you know, I've been bringing this up a long for, you know, for a long time now is because I wanted to watch how this inter uh, interrelates with price action to confirm or, or unconfirm uh, these trade ideas that, that I've been postulating for, for quite some time now. So to kind of spoil a little bit of surprise, yes, I actually did take a position off that test. Uh, into our next blue box territory. And I suppose now would be the good time to go on into the price action chart. But before that, actually uh, just what's going on over here. Okay, some, some weird stuff's going on in the top end metrics right now. Uh, but the fear and greed index still very low, which is rather surprising. Anyways, uh, let's go into the price action charts right in over here. And yes, indeed, uh, going to our BitMexican chart right here. We did hit into the blue box territory to the upside. 
Um, I do think it's possible that we'll get another swipe up into this region, but I did take a position on that first, uh, you know, on that first swipe up. I wouldn't mind another another extension all the way to like 7,900 or 8,000 even, but as long as Bitcoin price action is below there, I actually do like this for more of a uh, long-term trade. I've been patient for a long time and uh, now finally letting price action kind of fall through with it. And I'm sure that all of the Bitcoin bull laws out there are going to be like, fuck you, crown, you're going to get wrecked. Well, maybe it maybe i do but at the end of the day that's what risk management is for no one no one's getting wrecked with fucking risk management it's just silly um but you know this is this is what i've been waiting for for jesus christ like the last month and a half mostly based off of the two-day total time frame right in over here but i do want to follow up on the lower term time frame first and foremost yesterday we did say that uh, the second that we get a close back above about 7300 um, on a lower term time frame, we're likely going to initiate that that, uh, that next move up to the blue box territory or just taking out the last spike high that we saw from 7th of April or sorry, maybe a 6th of April right here that that 7450 ish region. Both of those obviously met in in that uh, in that uh, what's what's where I'm looking for catalyze that next move up into this region right in over here. This region I really do like for at the very least a short term high and a medium term high, even if it does not turn into be like a long term uh, turning point. Um, the reason why I say that is because, well, not only we not only do, are we kind of testing into the uh, 200 x benchmark average on the daily, but we're also going to be hitting this area that is historically very much relevant. The last breakdown that we saw from early March coming from uh, 8,000 all the way down to well 4,000 essentially coming in this region from that nice order blocks. And then of course, a liquid zone before this breakup from this accumulation zone in late 2019 before $4,000 rally. So $4,000 up, $4,000 down. This is a great pivot point on the market. I'm sure if we put on, you know, the volume profile it probably shows some sort of interest with in that region as well uh let's see it does does look like the point of control is where oh right around there absolutely fucking beautiful and on top of that if we were to go back into uh what's the other one that i wanted to look at oh sorry before we actually go into that let's actually go check out the good old fibs which you know if we've been watching these videos for a while now you already know where i'm going with this basically hit around the 618 not perfect um not perfect but i do want to make sure that this is consistent amongst all the major exchanges because i do believe that it actually did maybe on finex uh or just any exchange that not that uh, that is not named bit mexico um nope no it did not actually we did hit the 0 0.5 though uh so fair enough what if we actually took this from wick to wick then it would have hit the 618 so going from wick to wick Technically, yes. Uh, the problem is, is that I usually find that bodies are more consistent than wicks, although wicks have wicks do work. I just find that bodies more consistent, you know, longer term. So I don't really have too much to add on to that, but to take it a few steps further, of course, the big reason why I took that position was based off the two day which we do have the death cross and we are still operating below it. And now I really want to do a deep dive into this because to explain my own trading behaviors, not to say that this is what anyone else should be doing. This is not financial advice, not financial advisor, but I'm happy to, to explain what I'm doing here. And, uh, and if, you know, and, and, and if it turns against me, it turns against me. And that's, that's, that's trading at the end of the day, patience sometimes is not rewarded. Sometimes patience is punished, punished with a girthy green dildo right down your bunghole and out your mouth hole, like a goddamn shish kebab. Anyways, uh, looking at this right here, you know, we did get the death cross on the two day green 55 purple 200. And they are diverging away from each other. And as long as we are closing below the 55, it is pretty much valid as far as, I, as, as far as I'm concerned. Could we have another test up to the 200 exponential average? Yes, absolutely. But as long as we are on a closing basis below the 200 exponential average, which is, by the way, right in the midst of the next blue box to the upside that we tested into yesterday around 7,800 to 7,900, um, it is obviously, you know, well, going, uh, not going to un unfuck itself, so to speak. And the reason why I think that this is uh, long-term relevant is because when we do look at the past few examples of this in uh, in Bitcoin's history, going back to 2018, we do see a great example right in over here. The, and, and this is what we've been focusing on for like the last month. I've been saying the same, basically the same fucking thing for like a month now um, with regards to kind of looking at this. So a little bit of a deep dive here, maybe, maybe, maybe boring for the people who have actually been paying attention. Um, but uh, but for the new people here, uh, interesting nonetheless, or at least I hope so. If not, then leave a comment saying, Crown, you're not interesting and I hate you. And the most, disgu the most disgusting thing I've ever seen is your face. Well, 
I can't argue with that. <laughs> I can't argue with that, man. It's your opinion. Anyways, um, we do see a death cross back on over here in 2018. And once Bitcoin does get it, does kind of chop around the 21 for a while here, puts in a nice ascending triangle over a long period of time and does test up to the 55. Sounds familiar, right? Um, and uh, and then once we get shuffled back down below the 21 exponential mean average, it is pressure on. Yes, there is a lot of time spent within this region. And for perspective here, it from the cross itself on September 10th to the actual dooms drop right in over here, that was a, like a few days less than two months. It was basically about two months. And uh, it was basically September to November. And then you get your nice 50% drop off right in over there. And pressure is on as long as we are below the 21, which obviously right now we're actually above. So it's not really, uh, it's not really um, too relevant, like for right now, and to be, to, and, and also keep in mind that this death cross that we've had has not even played out for one month uh, on the current one. Anyways, the time before that that we've had this example is back in 2014, 2015. Very, very similar one right here, in fact, because the cross was very far away from price action at at first. Remember Bitcoin getting the death cross about a, uh, about a month ago now, a little bit less than a month ago. Um, price action was you know down in the five thousands, I believe. The cross happening uh, will obviously around like the upper seven thousands, lower. 8,000s. And then what happens? Bitcoin chops around a little bit, basically plays out this, this massive uh, ascending broadening wedge, and then gets rejected, and then tests up to the 55 and 200, gets rejected. As long as it's closing the two day below the 55, it is pressure on. Then it gets shuffled back down below the 21. And from death cross to dooms drop, I mean, do you want to call it right in over here? Do you want to call it right in over here? You could say that that was uh, 20th of October. Uh, more aggressively, I'd say early December, but on a break of this formation right here, I would say uh, late December. In fact, two months right here again. And then we get the dooms drop, baby. Another 48% down, depending upon where you measure it from. Again, more aggressive or less aggressive, but uh, I do think that that is interesting nonetheless. And to put it into perspective on the current timeframes on Bitcoin, let me get rid of all this right now. We do see that as long as Bitcoin's below the 55, it is it it, uh, it is something that I am you know certainly postulated right now, and that also gives me a very easy way to be managing this one going forwards. Doesn't mean it's gonna gar it's guaranteed to work out. Uh, of course, nothing's guaranteed to work out, um, but uh, but with a little bit of good risk management, I do think that at least for myself, granted my own trading personality, it's worth uh, it's worth a little bit of a risk here. Uh, looking at momentum monsters, we actually do see two-day stokes coming back up. They're going to be getting in a rather high area, although and two-day uh, two-day uh, jewel is actually good here as well. It's a halt of your long signal, so I could very easily be wrong on this, and I'll have to be very, 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 very quick to flip around to bullish at least for a move back up to uh, the mid eight thousands if Bitcoin even take even just takes out like yesterday's high at seventy seven fifty six. So I'm going to put an alert there right now, and uh, pretty damn close to my entry nonetheless. So I am rather happy to to play around that level um, but more importantly you know remember again the last two examples took about two months right this one over here starting in about uh, late March we are kind of getting into the later portion of April now about a month or sorry a week left in the month and that means that uh, still probably takes its time even if this uh, if, if this does play out you know historically speaking it would be an outlier as we said yesterday for it to just like hit up here and then just crumble back down no if this is gonna come back down it's probably gonna spend some time uh, you you know, playing, playing out, playing out these levels between the upper six thousands and the uh, mid to low seven thousands for another month, and then you know slowly but surely kind of curl on down. But for right now. If bulls are going to take control, uh, as we said yesterday, it happened sooner rather than later. We saw the initial etchings of that move yesterday, and then now today is, and, and today in the next few days, I do think bulls really do have their chance if they are going to take the reins and run this market the other way, which I would be happy to see, as I'd be happy to join, jump on that train as well. Maybe a little bit of having magic as well, although I think that that's a little bit more of a uh, <laughs> nuanced topic, which I don't want to get into right now, and I don't really think is all that relevant. To, I mean, it is relevant, obviously but there's just more tangible things to be going off of right now. And realistically, I do have to remind myself, looking at the monthly right here, which the monthly is closing relatively soon, uh, if we close anywhere above 7,300, which I actually think is rather unlikely, but if we were to close above 7,300, then yes, I would be interpreting this more as a potential reversal. But for right now, looking at this chart right here, I do think that uh, March looks looks like a capitulation wick, to be fair. But that doesn't necessarily mean that we just green our way back up to the heavens immediately. No, the way that I look at this is that at best, we probably actually do see a range between like 
uh, upper 5,000s and low 7,000s for like the next few months. And then perhaps if, if you know, if a reversal is going to happen, it's, you know, it's going to be a nice like U-shaped bottom. Um, and then there's also one other major thing that could actually switch me on to being bullish as well. And that's going to be revealed in the stock market, uh, which we'll get to a little bit later. But, uh, but you know, but again, just looking at, look, just looking at it right here, very, 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 very similar to the last few um, interactions that uh, the Bitcoin monthly has had with the yellow 21 exponential mean average, which is something that I used in traditional marks to judge if an asset is long-term bullish or bearish and i and you know you just judging it for yourself right here does seem to work pretty damn well on bitcoin as well very 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 similar reaction right in over here bitcoin has a parabolic run to the upside puts in a kind of descending triangle right in over here breaks down below the 21 comes up tests the 10 simple that's kind of looking like what we're doing right now um and obviously gets rejected and then another big dooms drop to the downside so i am uh, i am still entertaining those ideas and actually i do think that that is still rather likely here um looking at monthly stokes we are still nosediving as it is and we will continue to nosedive uh as long as bitcoin on a monthly closing basis is below about 8400 ish region again that's not saying it can't get back above there it's, it's not it's not saying that at all it's just saying as long as it's below there we are still pressured down as far as the higher time frames go looking at the monthly rsi i'm not so i this is a kind of a weird read it uh, I, I don't really know what to make of it, to be, going, to be quite honest with you. Bouncing off the, uh, I, I feel like we just need to see the end of this month and then it should probably reveal itself. I feel like we haven't, whatever, whatever is going on here, we have not seen the culmination of it just yet, whether it is, whether it is rejection or whether it is continuation of the upside. Um, but, uh, but as it stands, you know, that would be a little bit concerning to myself. Uh, anyways, going on and into the three day now, I don't think that this has any real threat of coming back down as long as Bitcoin is above the 200 simple on the three day, which is currently at about 7,100 ish region. So that would be in my next big pivot go for, you know, for a move to the downside, at least for, you know, edging the odds in that favor, which we'll look at the odds in just a little bit here. Anyways, uh, let's go back into the lower term timeframes. Now that we've kind of covered up the higher term timeframes. And uh, Markov levels, once again, although they are more or less consistent now, we can flip this blue box to make more of a liquid zone from yesterday's price action. Something like this is what I'd be looking towards. And um, and as long as Bitcoin is essentially using this as a nice, uh, you know, as a nice buffer zone, $100 region between about 73.50 and 74.50. And this is, you know, real, realistically applicable to the medium time frames, which I think is rather reasonable here. Um, I do think that Bitcoin's going to get another chance up into this blue box, it looks like. But remember, this area is still kind of riddled with resistance. Uh, so I do think that if Bitcoin were to really start to uh, work its way through this region, that's where things really can change, especially alongside a good monthly close. But until that happens, uh, or, or until that happens, I would I would be looking at this as just a game of blue boxes. Still, if Bitcoin does break back down below about 7,400 ish region, I would look for a return all the way down here, back towards about 71 uh, 7,100. Sounds familiar, right? That's a critical area on the three day, um, 7,100 7,150. And by the way, that's also going to be where the bottom support trend line for this long term formation, which we're still living very much in. We're still, I mean, you know you know despite all the excitement yesterday we're still living within the confines of this as a rising channel or a rising wedge whatever the fuck you want to call it um technically a rising wedge i suppose because it is a little bit more angled but uh but uh, uh you know but more reasonably it would be coming in right around that 7100 ish level right around here this blue box um from this time frame perspective now what i can do here is i can get rid of this one because it's not too relevant to the uh proximal price action i still do believe that this guy is relevant down here this hundred dollar region between about uh 60 or sorry 50 dollar region between 67 and 6750 um, and then of course all the same ones to the downside and we can do the same thing for the upside as well. But, uh, but realistically this blue box now is only relevant for the short term timeframes. If we do break it, it's not, you know, it's, it's not catastrophic or anything in my opinion. Uh, I would look for, I would look for a test down to like 71 or 71 50 ish region. That's where things actually can change for the medium and higher term timeframes by the same token, as long as we're kind of using it to bounce off of, I look for momentum also to just kind of flip back around and, uh, and give another try to our top side blue box, looking at four hour stokes. They look like they do want to cross back up to the upside and they will, uh, assuming that Bitcoin price action does close this next four hour deal above 70, 76, 20 ish region. So if Bitcoin can do that, I would look for another extension back up to about 79 or 8,000 even um, uh, on this next four hour doodle, which is closing in 45 minutes and 50 seconds. So by the time that I post this, we should have clarity on that situation. So keep that number in mind because it will be relevant for the short term time frames. Let's see how that kind of uh, transpires to our to our three hour, two hour and one hour. Three hour Stokes actually still nosediving here. Um, 
Uh, same area, 76.10. So I do like the confluence there. As long as Bitcoin is below there, you know, perhaps this does just trend, uh, just 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 go sideways for a little bit and then come down. Uh, but if we do get back above there, that's a damn good signal that we will be heading up another 340 bucks higher, maybe even more than that over time. Looking at the two hour, same thing, same area, essentially a little bit lower, 70, 75, uh, 60, it looks like. And for the hourly, um, for the hourly, the hourly actually looks good here. It looks like it does want, it does want to give a chance. So it is going to, it is going to, it does look like uh, Bitcoin bulls are going to have another chance here on the short term time frames before anything else happens. Um, and, uh, and then I judge from there overall. Uh, anyways, um, okay, so now I want to talk about something that really makes me consider the more bullish case on this. Uh, oh, and I just realized gold's actually heading up to our top side target, so I'm actually quite uh, quite excited to talk about that too. Um, but the big thing here is, is uh, traditional markets. Traditional markets did have a nice run up yesterday too. Did not make a new high alongside Bitcoin, um, but uh, but but Bitcoin didn't necessarily make a new high alongside traditional markets on the 17th of April. Still kind of trading together overall. But I do I do believe the more and more that I look at this, I, the more and more I believe that we've actually seen the bottom in traditional markets. Now that doesn't mean that it's not going to come back down. I actually do think it's going to come back down, probably even around you know rather low like 240 or 245, somewhere in that pocket down around there. Uh, more medium and long term, but I, I do think that we probably seen the lows on this. Um, the more and more that I look at the, you know, I, I've been, I've been, I've been uh, entertaining this idea for the past couple of weeks, and you probably hear, heard me say this before. But you know, the more that I see it kind of go around here, the more and more that I do think that that's likely what's happening. Um, I don't think that we're, I don't, I, you know, regardless of whether you think we're going into a recession or depression, whatever the fuck, I don't think that the stock market cares. Um, Let's go look at NAS futures. NAS futures getting the same sort of uh, rejection yesterday, a little bit of continuation down. So we did get the move up that we were looking for yesterday. Now, uh, now on the lower term time frames, I think that we're going to pop back up, probably back up towards 86.50 ish region. Let's see what E-mini futures say as well. Same thing, pro uh, probably back up to 2800. And so that means that SPY, I'd be looking for it for it to pop back up, maybe a little bit. I mean, SPY looks weird, man. It, it I, I would, I'd expect it to probably pop down, or sorry, drum, uh, drop down to about 274 and then bounce up from there but looking at the futures they uh they look more bouncy than not so we'll see how that how that operates alongside uh traditional markets open but the reason why i think that these are more or less bottomed uh long term is is the more that i look at historical volatility percentile here the more that i look at uh the v bottom that we've had off this region the more that i look at uh all of our momentum oscillators they do suggest that we've hit critical points and while again i'm not saying that this can't come back down i actually do think it's going to come back down i just don't think that it's going to make a new low and i think that you know as low as it's going to go is like maybe 240. uh we've seen this a lot of times in the past you know big parabolic top comes down really really hard bounces up extremely aggressively in a V bottom shape, then kind of hangs its head low again, retests around the low, but doesn't necessarily get there again. And I think that that's what we're seeing here. Although I would wait for the monthly. Now I would feel a lot more confident calling a low on this. If, 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 hey, if, <laughs> if I need, and I still need a few days here cause we need what, hold on. Let me just calculate this out. Oh, we need, okay. Yeah. We have another week basically. Um, if we close the monthly above the 21, which is 286 and a half, we'll call uh, 286 and a half. So if if I do see spy close above there, I I I, I believe that the low is in. And you know, while we do probably test a lower over time, I or sorry, not not lower, but we probably do test you know somewhere around this region over time. I don't think that we're going to be making a new low. If if spy closes below the 21 on the monthly, um, then I think it's still a topic of conversation that we could go ultimately lower, maybe even maybe even as low as like 190 or something like that long term. That should be a no brainer somewhere down around there. Whoa, what the fuck was that? What's up, Mitchell? Mitchell Buzzard, good to meet you, man. And I don't know what becoming a sponsor means, but uh, but uh, appreciate that, man. Um, <laughs> it's like I don't even know my own my own uh, signals. Um, anyways, uh, looking at momentum oscillators, they are certainly more e geared towards the downside. However, once again, it is revealed on monthly RSI. If we actually do put in a nice local low here, this will be hidden bullish divergence, and that's when I do join the you know the rest of the cr well maybe not the rest of the crowd, but a lot of the big money managers that you've probably been hearing saying that this thing's gonna test back above well above 300, like 320, maybe even beyond, and make new highs. You know in, in, the, in the coming months um again this is all hinging upon the fact of what i just said with regards to this monthly close but uh, for right now 
Um, I think, I, you know, I, I, I think it's, it's certainly possible. And realistically, anytime that we've seen historical volatility percentile get very red or even just a little bit red on the monthly, those have been your major lows. Uh, the only thing that really makes me consider the other side of it is the fact that the monthly had a gigantic jewel sell signal in uh, January, which was uh, right here. If you hindsight traded that, actually it went a little bit higher the next month and then came down pretty damn hard. But, uh, but usually, you know, this signal right here has plenty more plenty more room to go the problem is is that um is that realistically this has already given you a pretty damn good move i mean this is kind of like the definition of greed right 35 35 and a third percent top to bottom in a couple months i mean that's pretty fucking good would it be relevant to say that signal's already played out i i think that you could say that yes um i think that you could say that um so fair enough. Anyways, uh, going at it from a daily. Um, yeah, I, I do think it's going to have some short term downside, though. Uh, again, need to be very, very clever with the way that I kind of uh, uh, relay my thoughts with short term, medium term and long term, as was Bitcoin short term bullish, medium term and long term. I still kind of reserve my reservations for that. Uh, same thing with tr uh, traditional market stuff kind of backwards. I think short term probably uh, probably bearish here um, and then medium and long term. I, I do think it's I do think it's going to test higher actually, but I need to see the monthly close. That's what's going to make me feel a lot more confident on this. Uh, looking at Japan, they closed down almost a percent today. Uh, not really running the markets here though, but looks you know looks short term talky to me. I do think that this one will come down short term. Same thing with Germany, down one point six percent. Uh, opening on you know you know opening on the 21 probably going to bounce back up here but ultimately i do think that you know sometime over the next couple of weeks probably comes back down to this pocket a little bit below 10,000 but is the low in i'm not i i i i, th I think that there's a good case to be made for that i actually do think that there's a very good case to be made for that um we're already 26 minutes into this video jesus christ man let's go check out gold really quick uh 1730 i'm still bullish on this one i've been bullish on this one and i will continue to be bullish on this one i don't even own any gold i don't care to own any gold I think it's kind of a silly rock, but as far as, you know, what, what the world is actually looking for as a hedge during these times, uh, seems to be this it's, it's, it's the thing that's acting most as a hedge. Right. And, uh, and I've been saying for a while, I do think that long term it heads back up or maybe not back up. It heads up to like 1800 ish bucks. Um, and then from there we will come back and decide, but, uh, but looking at it right here, uh, looks very constructive on a weekly. Uh, it's going to have a damn good chance. Damn good chance to close very, 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 very well today. I'd say any sort of a any sort of a weekly closure, and even just above seventeen hundred, is phenomenally good. Even above sixteen ninety is good. Uh, but the, but but it, it's 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 looking good here. Uh, monthly close anywhere anywhere above anywhere above sixteen fifty looks good to me. And and I do believe that we're going to get that continuation to the upper seventeen hundreds, low eighteen hundreds region. And then from there, I'd want to come back and reassess. And again, this you know this looks like a very constructive chart long term with the way this kind of like putting its time for Jesus Christ like multiple years here on the lows and then working its way upwards and onwards. I actually trade. Uh, I actually traded this. This was the only bear market that I'd ever traded or ever had the opportunity to trade realistically before coming into Bitcoin land because uh, I was trading this back in, I don't know, somewhere right around here. I saw it go all the way up to fucking 1800, 1900. I traded GLD, not not gold actually, but same thing basically. It's just an ETF for it and we can look at it uh, directly right in over here. And, uh, and I watched this thing go all the way from fucking 170 down to a hundred bucks, uh, in, it, you know, over the course of like three, four years and then slowly, but surely kind of put in its time here and then work its way back up. So to see this is just, uh, it's just kind of like you get to go full circle, I suppose. Um, anyways, um, 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 let's go check out, uh, the buterols and the light coins of the world, see how they're doing. And again, you know, looking at the monthly right here, I, I have a really difficult time getting bullish on this monthly. I mean, I mean, for fuck's sake, I mean, first off, this is the chart on linear scale. We can do it on log scale just to give the crypto people their, their, uh, their, their due diligence. But, uh, but still, man, there's nothing bullish about what seems to be a monthly downtrend. That's also create, I mean, let me just get rid of everything here. This is all we need. I mean, I mean, th this, this is what it is as it stands. It's, it's a fucking descending triangle on the lows as it stands. I mean, you know, could it revert that? Yeah. If we close a monthly back above 220, yeah, fuck yeah. I'm, I'm going to be wrong about that, but I don't, I don't think so. Uh, monthly Stokes down. Monthly RSI is bizarre. 
actually does kind of look like once bounce. So perhaps I'm going to be wrong on that one. Um, the weekly does look good though. The weekly does look good, but if we were to remake this chart for a weekly and if Bitcoin gets another, another, uh, move to the upside, you know, we do have this, tr this competing trend line coming in somewhere right around here. Right. Still kind of marking off this as a uh, long-term descending, uh, descending, um, uh, triangle. Uh, so again, you know, it could pop up all the way to like 250. Um, and the weekly actually does look okay here. You know, I, I think, I think that the weekly is, is, is looking rather bullish. I mean, seeing momentum also is turn up at the same time that price actually retakes some of these major, major movement averages. I do like that. Uh, looking at Mrs. Litecoin, uh, certainly the laggard of the, uh, you know, the top market caps, uh, monthly looks atrocious here. Again, I mean, it's a clear downtrend. Um, momentum monsters are also down. Uh, I, I don't, I don't necessarily care for this chart here. Um, and so we're seeing a lot of the market kind of, uh, it, we either we're going to see the market bifurcate and we actually are going to see Bitcoin and, and maybe some of the more strong ones go bullish or, 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 you know, or the greater market is kind of giving insight into what this market really is supposed to look like, which is nice. Anyways, um, what else do we want to look at? Uh, maybe we'll go back to Bitcoin for a second here. Um, let me go back on and check out. Is there anything? I, I don't think I spoke about the weekly. Weekly looks decent for Bitcoin as well. I want to see how it closes, but uh, any sort of a weekly close, um, any sort of a weekly close above 70, 70, 7,700 to 7,800, and now would look really good to me. Uh, any weekly close above 7,800 would look phenomenally good for to me, uh, at least for a move back up to like 8,500-ish region. Um, by the same token, any sort of a weekly close below 8,200, or sorry, 7,200, very nasty, and I'd be looking for a move back down here longer term. So I think that we're going to see a lot of this revealed uh, uh, one by the next uh, weekly close, so Sunday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, which also, keep in mind, we get to see CME's close for the week today, so we should actually check out their chart. And CME is a little bit different here, uh, CMEs need to close above 7450-ish region for me to uh, entertain more upside. Um, and, and if it closes above, let's call it eight or, or even if it closes even above like 7,800, that looks really fucking good for me as well for another move up to like 8,500, 8,600-ish region. Um, but, uh, but again, you know, we should, we, you know, we'll get cleared on that situation, uh, at 5 PM central standard time tonight. So 6 PM Eastern time, if you're going uh, off East coast time, and then I want to see the weekly close for Bitcoin and then the monthly close. And once we have those, that should really shore up the ideas of, okay, are we seeing just a bearish retreat? retest of a long-term downtrend or are we seeing potentially an emerging uh an emerging reversal for you know for the long term and when i say an emerging reversal for the long term i mean like an actual like like an actual stain reversal where bitcoin actually does do one of those massive green dildo parties from from you know from the heavens but again looking at the monthly here from cme perspective it, it it's not good it, like it's it's I have, a, I have a really hard time looking at this chart and and saying ah it looks to me like i should be long-term bullish I, I still think that i'm actually validated in those ideas of bitcoin um a, a bitcoin kind of playing out those uh you know those long-term downs or at least another big test of the downs i'm not necessarily even saying that it's going to make new lows um but uh but i want to see those time frames close close first and like i said at the end of the day with risk management no one's getting wrecked well well you could still get risk wrecked with risk, with bad risk management, I guess. But uh, but at the end of the day, you know, I think I think levels here are very 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 clear. And uh, and as long as Bitcoin is kind of like adhering to that, I do think that we're going to slowly but surely kind of ebb out. Um, so let's go, let's go look at probabilities and see if the maths is going to prove me wrong. Well, it's I mean it's probability probabilities are probabilities, right? Um, but let's put back on our low term time frame. Jesus Christ! Okay, that chart is very convoluted. Yeah, this is a chart that I want to work off again. This area right here um, only relevant for the short term. A nice uh, we could actually uh, make this into a fifty dollar range rather than a seventy dollar range between about uh, 74, uh, 74 40 we'll call it and seventy three ninety we'll call it. Um, as long as Bitcoin remains above there, I do think that it's probably going to get another test up into this region, especially with the weekend coming. I, I wouldn't mind that. By the same token, any sort of a break below 7,400, um, I would look for a move back down here to test around uh, 7,150 to 7,100 ish region. That's where things could get interesting once again for the downside. Um, and of course, to the upside, a uh, big area right around 7,900, uh, especially for CME's close in the latest night and for the week, that is. And of course, to the downside, we can actually move up that 6,700 region that we we're seeing uh, uh, that I was looking at yesterday to about 7,100 now. And let's go look at the probabilities of that. So we can see very obviously here that. Uh, uh, the rings are severely squeezing the upside, although this is on current time frames. Let's go check out future. 
Let's see what that says. Uh, petering out a little bit, but uh, but not you know not a huge deal. Put it back on current for now. So do you want to be looking at that and uh, looking at? Okay, so we actually want to. Uh, take this one down. Let's use um, 7,800 or no, no, no. Let's actually make it. I want to be a little more conservative with this. I'd, I'd want to pivot faster to the upside if that does happen. So 7,750 to the upside and we can do 7,100 to the downside. Let's see what this shows right now. And that's showing an upside target probability of actually a little bit under 21%, a below target probability of, uh, again, 7,100. So it's it's actually, it would seem more reasonable in some sense, uh, a little bit less than 7%. So upside is still more likely here. So what I've been saying over the last few days is that if bulls are going to take control, they do it sooner rather than later. And I, that's still what the maths would would align with. So if bulls are going to really flip this one, one around, I think that they do the damage like within these next few days, realistically speaking. Uh, I didn't even look at historical volatility percentile, but I should uh, soon here. Um, let's actually move up the bottom side target probability uh, to the 74, let's do 73, 80 actually on like a four hour total closure. This is obviously going to be a daily. It's not really fair. Let's go to let's go to a four hour because it's obviously going to be way higher on a daily. On a four hour, it would be a little bit over nine percent. So it is still within the cards. But uh, I think Bitcoin is actually probably going to probably going to give another test to the upside here. Um, however, looking at the sorry, uh, remember with the low time frame also does they will turn back up to the upside back above. I think it was seventy six twenty. So let's see what the probability of closing above that in the next four hour total actually relatively high twenty six and a quarter. Or almost 26 and a quarter percent, which is certainly a lot higher than nine, nine, uh, nine and a quarter percent. Um, so, you know, I, I still stay with what I'm saying that uh, if Bitcoin bulls are going to revert this whole thing right now, probably does happen sooner rather than later. Uh, if we do close back above uh, anywhere above 7,900, I would look for extension all the way up to about uh, 80, oh, Jesus Christ, 84, 8,500 ish region, um, more medium term. Uh, but I think that we will likely get a chance to kind of come back, reanalyze that as time goes on. I don't think that's happening today, or at least hopefully it doesn't happen today. Let me get this right there. Um, and, uh, and while we're at it, let's actually go check out historical volatility percentile. Let's see, did it expand yesterday? This is, okay, this is also very problematic. I mean, it, call me fucking crazy, man, but I still do think that this is very concerning. We're still in a contraction phase. Open interest come, came down 50, 50 to 60 million yesterday on that pop to the upside. I don't think that we're done here. Um, I don't think that we're done here. We haven't seen the expansion that you expect to that you you expect to see from you know from that move that we saw to the upside yesterday. Uh, if things were really going to change themselves around, we've actually just come up and not even tested the trend line on this. Tested the moving average on this. To be fair, doesn't need to be exact though. But uh, I'm still aiming for a resolution date of this um, somewhere around here. So 28th, 29th of uh, of April. So we did you know we did get the short term move uh it, within this week which which that was that was proper but now the resolution of the greater whole coming in from march 13th to where we are right now i think that this is still kind of lining up with the rising channel man um i'm i'm still very skeptical on this uh Again, doesn't mean that I can't be proven wrong. I'm sure that there's going to be a lot of very interesting and uh, and more or less rude comments uh, if I am wrong in that. But at the end of the day, you know, this is this is still concerning to myself. Um, we do see 12 hour stocks up, so good. <laughs> uh, although we do have a trend line coming in right here, so well, or do we? Nah, it's, it it looks fine for now. Ten technically right there, but I don't think it's a huge deal. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much going to do it for right now. Uh, this video is already 37 minutes long. Uh, th these videos all seem to be the same length, no matter what I do. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. Uh, but yeah, short-term range, uh, 74. Uh, 74 to the downside. If we do break that, I'd be looking for a move down to like 71, 71, 50 ish region. So $300 move, 5% uh, at this price point. To the upside, uh, anywhere above 76, 20 ish region on these next closures for the four hour and below. And uh, we likely do get another test back up to 7,800, 7,900 ish region right here. That's where things could start to change around from the medium and higher term timeframes. But I really want to see the weekly close for CMEs tonight, the weekly close for spot on Sunday, and then the monthly close uh, in about six days. Yeah, six days, so a little bit less than a week now. So that should offer up a lot more clarity on the more long-term situation. But for right now, I think short terms are actually even, you know, rather tradable themselves, which is, you know, which is nice. Anyways, that's going to do it for right now. I want to take a second to wish you well once again. And, uh, and I don't know if I'll be on Twitch today. Um, I might be on Twitch today. I need to. I need to. I need to take over a few things first and uh, set up a few more things, and then perhaps it's it's uh, game time once again. If I if I'm not there, I would like to wish you the best, of the best, and uh, and until next time, take care.